Howdy folks! Welcome back to the Steampunk Desperado channel. I'm your host Vaughn Troidy and I am the Steampunk Desperado. Today we're going to break from our usual routine here on the Steampunk Desperado channel and not talk about fiction. We are going to talk about history. And history is one of my fascinations and of course that's one of the reasons why I like steampunk so much. Because it is a type of fiction that often, if not usually, uh, interweaves history in with, with, the, with the fiction, with the story, even though we may mangle and change it a little bit, but it interweaves history, it interweaves historical themes. One of the things you may have noticed is that a lot of steampunk stories take place in England, specifically in London, or have other aspects of Britishness, have British protagonists, have have citizens, or as they were called, subjects of the British Empire, as characters. And therefore, I'm going to talk today about the British Empire. Now, there's a lot of trash talking these days about our historical heritage. We of the West, we of European extraction, and a lot of, a lot of um, bad things people are saying about the history of America, about the history of Britain, about the history of Canada and Australia, and I say fie on that kind of stuff. All nations have good and bad in their history, and we should celebrate and be proud of the great things about our heritage. And although I'm American, I must admit that I'm a bit of an Anglophile. Strangely enough, a well, member of my family got a uh, DNA test done and said we, we were part English. I don't actually believe it. I think that was the Saxon and our German. But nonetheless, I remain an Anglophile. And so today I'm going to talk about the top 10 reasons why the British Empire was brilliant. Yes, brilliant. And many thanks to Yahoo Answers for kind of inspiring me in this list. I had a lot of ideas in mind, but I was having a hard time quantifying them and, and picking out the best. So thanks to the internet, thanks to modern technology, I will be handling my historical references with a little bit more flair. Now, the British Empire was the largest empire the world has ever known. And that includes like the Soviet Union and uh, the old Chinese Empire, the Roman Empire, and all those different places. It was at its peak, it's girdled the globe, and the saying was, the sun never sets on the British Empire, and that was quite true. It had possessions on every continent. Now, the British Empire invented, invented many things. People of the British Empire, that is, invented many things, and it achieved a lot of good. We, these days, we only hear about the bad things, we hear about oppression, we hear about uh, rebellions that were put down and so on. Yeah, that happened, that happened, but there were a lot of great things as well, and I think that we should recognize them. So, I have, as I said, I have the top 10 reasons the British Empire was brilliant. Number 10, the British invented many sports, and the British Empire helped to spread them around the world. These include sports like football, known here in America as soccer, cricket, rugby, hockey, boxing, and horse racing. Now some of these, of course, like especially boxing and horse racing, were existed before, but the British helped to create the rules. I'm sure you've heard of Marquis of Queensberry. <laughs> uh, and they helped formulate the rules and make them into a popular sport. Number nine, the British founded many important cities around the world. Cities like Boston, Vancouver, Hong Kong, um, Mumbai, formerly known as Bombay, Singapore, Melbourne, Nairobi. These are some of the most outstanding and important cities of the world. If the British Empire was so terrible, why did they found such great cities? Number eight. You're going to hear a lot of things. I expect that somebody may comment, what about India? What about all the oppression? Well, yeah, there was some oppression. But you can't really imagine modern India without the British Raj having, been, having existed. Seriously, the British unified India. They made it in the modern state that it is now. Now, all these different languages, all these different warring nationalities, and 
the British brought them together. Also, the British did a lot of modernization. They, they uh, pushed back the caste system, which was holding India back, and they abolished some pretty awful practices. If you've heard of sati, the, the, uh, the practice of burning a widow alive on her husband's funeral pile, and the British helped out in this respect. So, number seven, literacy and education. Wherever the British went, they spread literacy and education. They opened schools, they taught people to read and write in many countries where, where that was not common, which is fantastic. You know, places like Africa and so on, where um, a lot of the people didn't have a written language, and uh, people came in, scholars came in from England, and other places in Europe or in America and, and they helped set these languages, create their own system of writing and so on. And what better way to elevate other parts of the world than to spread education, knowledge, knowledge, science and so forth, things like that. It's it's a great thing. Number six. This is gonna this is one of my favorites as a a steampunk. Uh, Infrastructure, in particular, railroads. British love trains, and they built trains in a lot of places, uh, especially you know places like India and so on, and uh, Burma, now known as Myanmar, <laughs> Australia, Canada, Africa, all these places. The British built railroads so that you could move people and goods around, uh, advancing commerce and progress. And we love trains, and trains are wonderful. Even if trains are a little obsolete these days, I think their day is not done. We need to appreciate the lower our environmental footprint of trains and the savings of energy and so on. I think, I think trains are going to be making a comeback in the future. Number five, legal and banking systems. This sounds boring, but it really is not. If the world if, if there's going to be justice in the world, we have to have a legal system. We have to have a way to determine who is in the right, who is in the wrong, to settle disputes, uh, to go after crime, to try and make a harmonious society. Also, we have banking systems for commerce, finance, things like that. That's no accident that a lot of these British cities, like London, of course, have, and Hong Kong, Singapore, have become financial hubs. It's because the British have some of, have advanced a lot of the uh, things like stock markets. I don't believe, I think maybe it was the Dutch that invented the stock market, but nonetheless the British really, really had a lot to do with spreading it. Number four, this is going to be probably my favorite as a steampunk, inventions and the industrial revolution that, that came from that. You've got to admit that without British inventions, there would have been no Industrial Revolution. Things like, you know, James Watt's steam engine. Now, he didn't invent the steam engine. That came from the ancient Greeks, but it was just a toy. Before, before people like Watt improved it and made it practical, what could you do with a steam engine? It was just like something that would make, make noise and basically spin a, spin a, wheel, spin a little you guys and, and so on. And of course with the steam engine there was a steam locomotive it became a big deal like I was just saying about railroads uh, that was invented by uh, John Murdoch. A lot of these inventors were Scottish by the way so they weren't all English but they're still part of the British Empire. The telephone, Alexander Graham Bell was, was um, originally of Scottish extraction. Antibiotics, cement, photography, stainless steel, the toothbrush, all these things that British people invented that helped revolutionize the world and, and helped create all the gadgets that we love to see in a steampunk novel. All the, all the wonderful things, some of which didn't really exist but we wish we would have, we would have had. They definitely paid, played their part in the advancement of science and engineering. Number three, the English language. <laughs> I can't miss the English language. I mean, that's what we're speaking right now. The English language is, uh, it's a mixed bag. A lot of people say that it's difficult to learn. Having been a native speaker, of course, I didn't have that experience. But 
it's definitely one of the more expressive languages. We have more words from other countries and cultures than, than probably any other language. Other languages steal them from us. And one of the nice things about it is we've lost a lot of those rigid, structural, grammatical, um, grammatical um, things that makes it hard to learn. We have a, have, have a nice alphabet and that makes it relatively easy to learn how to read and write. And we have an easy grammar that's, that's not like if you ever studied German and learn all the participles and the, the cases and the tenses or Latin, God forbid, or Japanese. I've studied that. That's a very complicated language. So English has definitely got a, an, a leg up as far as being expressive and flexible and less rules bound than a lot of other languages. Number two, as a desperado, I gotta say this, the USA. Where did the USA come from? But the British Empire used to be part of the, part of the British colonies, of course. And although we broke free, that was still our start. That was where it came from. That's where we got our common law from, our ideas of liberty and so on. These things came from the British. And even though my ancestors were Germans and Swedes, we came here to America and we adapted we adopted a lot of those customs and stuff that are really more English than German or Scandinavian. So it's got to be part, it's got to be something that we recognize as part of our heritage that, that is a stronger, is stronger than blood in our case. And a lot of other people that have no British or even European uh, ancestry at all have adopted these, these British and American type values because the British came and founded this country. So I've got to thank them for that. Number one, number one, this is what I have to have to acknowledge the most and the best. Number one is the Magna Carta. Yes, the document in which the nobles corralled the king and limited his power and really took the, took the idea of limited government and freedom into the world. I mean, people may talk about the British Empire as being oppressive, but just imagine some of the alternatives we've seen in, seen in, in the world, seen in world history. Uh, the, you had none of the kind of brutality that, that maybe the, the Romans or the Chinese practiced, or the Russians, or so on, or even the Spaniards, because we had this, this idea of human liberty we may have had abominations like slavery for a while, but, but understand that the British abolished theirs early. They got rid of it way before America did. And good for them. Because they gave us the idea of freedom, and they gave us the, the Bill of Rights, was really all inspired. Freedom of speech, religion, assembly, um, freedom uh, from cruel and unusual punishment, uh, right to confront your accuser, to a speedy trial, all those things are British common law. And that's something that we really have to be grateful for. If anything, if we uh, acknowledge anything that the British gave us, that has to be number one. And I know there may be some people out there who say, oh, this is patriarchy, this is like white oppression or European oppression. Fie on you! Liberty is for everybody. Everybody. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not ashamed to say that. So, this has been, this has been uh, the Steampunk Desperado channel, and I've been talking about the British Empire and all the great things that it accomplished. Trying to clear the air a little bit, kind of even the scales as far as the historical record. I really thank you for being with me. Please let me know what you think about this show. Let me know if you'd like to see more about history, uh, and not just fiction. Please like and subscribe below. That really helps us spread the word and get noticed. If we have more subscribers, then maybe more people will come and see us. Anyway, like I said, thank you for now. This is Vaughn Troidy, the Steampunk Desperado, saying adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel, where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary.